This session is going to be on hypothesis testing and I'm going to take you through the basic four-step procedure for, um, for hypothesis testing. So you see here our definition for hypothesis testing, statistical procedure um, that uses sample data to evaluate hypothesis about a population parameter. And so for this example we're going to still use that z-score that we worked at for z-score for, for a group. Um, and basically the structure of the z-score is just the obtained or observed difference divided by the difference due to chance. That's an important thing to keep in mind because that's really what when we do t-tests and ANOVA this is the fundamental structure of all of those um, uh, of all of those formulas. Just the observed difference divided by the difference we uh, expected uh, due to chance. And that uh, z-score then um, or whatever or the t-score as well just tells us how much larger is the observed difference or obtained difference than what we'd expect by chance. Another way to think of it is just the, the sample mean minus the hypothesized uh, population mean divided by the standard error between the sample mean and the population mean. So let's go through an example, a research problem example similar to the one we had before. So does intense reading, reading um, no, excuse me, does intense phonics instruction increase students' reading skills? So as we go through this, um, we've got our four-step testing procedure, and you could think about it, this is similar to what happens in a courtroom. So the first is to state the hypothesis, and so we have what's called the null hypothesis. Null, use your a mnemonic device for this is null, no, there's no difference between groups, okay? The treatment has no effect. And our symbol for this is, is H sub zero. Um, so this is analogous to um, the presumption of innocence in a court of law. Um, so we, we assume that there's, there's, the treatment has no effect until we have enough evidence to say that it does have an effect. Just like we assume that somebody is not guilty um, in, until we have enough evidence to say that the individual is guilty. The alternative hypothesis, the H sub 1, treatment has an effect. Okay, so we have a null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, so in our example here, um, for our research question, our null hypothesis might be that the, um, the students who get the phonics instruction, that that mean equals the population mean, okay? And our alternative hypothesis that the mean of the phonics does not equal the population mean. So that's our first step. We, sit, we state our hypothesis and we have our null and al alternative hypothesis. Second step in hypothesis testing is to set a criteria for our decision. And so what we have what's called the alpha level. Um, and so basically, you, generally what we do for setting an alpha level, uh, and that's alpha there, equals the standard is to set it at 0 0.05, okay? Um, that, so in, analogous to that would be we're 95 percent sure we'd be correct in our decision, or that we're willing we're, we might be five percent wrong um, that we're the uh, five percent chance that we're wrong in our decision making. Um, so this again in court of law is analogous to um, the beyond a reasonable doubt the statement that's given to, to jurors, and then we have a critical region that we set. So the extreme sample values that are very unlikely to be obtained for null hypothesis is true. We talk about one and two tail tests here. Um, so a one tail test would be we're just focusing on, on one tail of the distribution. All we care about is one tail of the distribution versus a two tail test. We're interested in both tails of the distribution. We're interested. In, so this means that we're interested if if the intense phonics inst instruction really works is what we what we anticipate. But we're also interested on this other end. Let's say it bores them to tears. We're interested in that as well, and, they, and it makes them perform worse on the on the reading test. So we're interested. In, um, oftentimes, what we're interested in is in two tails of the distribution. So what standard is to set alpha at 0 0.05? Sometimes it does get set at 0 0.01. Um, uh, sometimes, in extreme cases, uh, 0 0.10. Um, that's a discussion for a, for a later time. Typically, though, we set it at 0 0.05, and typically we say it's a two-tailed test. Okay. So what we would need to do then is find our cutoff scores. Stop that here. 
So we'd have to find our cutoff scores. And so since our alpha is set at 0 .05, 0 .05 we, and we want a two-tail test, what we need to do is evenly cut off that 0 .05 into both tails of the distribution. So half of 0 .05 is 0 .025 and we need 0 .025 here. And so what we need to grab is in the back of our book, remember we have this um, statistical table, the unit normal table, it starts on page 584. And what we want to look at is the proportion of the tail, and it needs to be the proportion of the tail that is um, closest to 0 .025. That's, what we're, that's the number we're interested in. As so we go through, here looking for 0 0.025 in the tail, so proportion in the tail, 0 0.025 is right there, and the z-score that corresponds to that is 1.96. Okay, so 1.96 is our cut. The z-score of 1.96 is our cutoff score. So 1.96 here and negative 1.96 here. So again, that tells us that um, if the reading, uh, the phonics instruction works and students do better on the reading test, that would be over on this end of the distribution. If it does worse, um, then it would be down here on this end of the distribution. Okay, our third step is to collect the data and compute the sample statistic. So we've got our set of data here. The population mean for students who, who take this reading test is 40. Population standard deviation is 10. We randomly took 64 students, put them through this intense reading phonics instruction. They have a mean score of 44 on the reading test. So Z equals sample mean minus population mean divided by we have the standard deviation and the square root of n. So for our set of data here, z equals 44 is our sample mean minus the population mean of 40. Standard deviation is 10 divided by the square root of 64. So we have 4 in the numerator. That's our observed difference. Remember this denominator is the difference we'd expect by chance. 10 divided by 8, 4 divided by 1.25, 3 .2. 3 3.2 is our z-score. In other words, we can say the observed difference is a little over three times larger than what we'd expect by chance. This is what we'd expect by chance between between the two groups, just with random sampling errors. Our fourth piece here is to make a decision. Two possible outcomes. We either gather enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, or the evidence we gather is not convincing. Again, just like in a court of law. So if you'll remember, our cutoff score here was 1.96 and one, negative 1.96 1 here, okay, is our critical regions. Our z-score we obtained was 3.2. That's in our critical region. That's enough evidence for us. We needed a z-score of 1.96 or larger uh, here to reject the null hypothesis. We have enough evidence, 3.2, so we gathered enough evidence um, to reject the null hypothesis, okay? And our interpretation of the results for this then is we go, we go back to the means and we say the intense, if you'll notice this mean is larger than the population mean, and we'd say we have evidence here that indicates that um, with this sample of students, the intense reading uh, phonics program seemed to help them uh, significantly in, um, in increasing their reading scores. 